So you're in Photoshop, you wanna know how to use the mixer brushes, stick with me, I'm gonna show you the basics of it. Uh, maybe I'll do a follow-up tutorial with this, but this should be enough to at least get you going. So come with me, I'll help you out. So let's go ahead and start talking about it. Wet is probably the most important because it has uh, impact on several other controls. So let's just kind of talk about it now. So if you look at wet, I have it at 0%, okay? When it's at 0%, if I take a brush stroke and I brush out, what this means is that your brush is going to be 100% uh, opaque or let me explain it in a better way. It's not going to be wet. It's not going to smear around. It's not going to have fluidity. This is more or less a dry media, like a pastel or a color pencil, okay? Before I change the wet slider, I want to move over one to the load slider because this one's really important. Um, if you have wet set to zero, and then you have load set at 100%, that's what allows us to have a continuous brush stroke. If you change the load slider to one, okay, and one is as low as you can go. Now, if you go to one, what's gonna happen is your paint is loaded and then it dries out. So imagine you have a paint on the brush stroke or on a brush, and as you brush down, the paint fades out and dissipates, okay? Here's a little important distinction here, okay? So you can have it at one, you're gonna get a short dry out. You can obviously have it somewhere in the middle here, and you're gonna have a little bit more paint on the brush before it eventually fades out. But there's something really interesting about the mixer brushes is this. If you have a different brush tip, and I have the exact same settings, you'll notice that the dry out is completely different. Okay, very unpredictable. Someone else may know why this is. I do not know. It's been like this forever. Um, but I do want you to be aware of that because you can have a brush that's set up and you like the settings and then you try a different tip and it's going to respond differently. So I wanted to bring that to your attention. Okay, so we have this where it fades out. Now, let's close this up for a second. Okay. So let's go ahead, oops, empty that out. So what we're gonna do now is I'm going to brush this down and I'm gonna leave the load, excuse me, the load at 1%. Now what I'm gonna show you is we're gonna to go to wet, okay? So what we know with load, it determines how much of the paint is on the brush and when it will fade out. Now I wanna show you wet. If we turn wet up, okay, just even a little bit, what happens now is I'm pressing with the same pin pressure with my uh, input device, with my Wacom pin. You'll notice that I'm pressing and it eventually fades out the same way, but you'll know, notice that the length of the stroke is a lot longer because I want you to imagine that the paint is wet and is sliding across your canvas. Okay, So the wet is going to determine how much of that slides across. But you also want to pay attention to the fact that when you turn wet up pretty high, uh, you won't get full opacity of the color. There are a lot of other controls, but that's the main thing I want you to think about. So if I crank the wet up to 100, and now I'm going to change the load all the way to 100, you'll notice I'm brushing down and it's not full strength. I'm pressing one spot and if I keep stroking, stroking the area, it'll eventually get darker, but it's not one of those things where you just hit it with one stroke and it's going to be as solid red. And also if you really look closely with that red, it's still not as opaque. Now, if you change this wet slider down to let's say 8%, okay, you'll see it fills in a little quicker but it's one of those things where you have to restroke in the uh, same area. Sometimes the, the difference between, let's say, 5 to, let's say, 70%, sometimes it's barely noticeable. So when you shift the value to, let's say, 1 or 2, you should see 
a little difference of how this paint releases. Okay, it fills in a lot quicker. Now, let's move across for a second. You'll see that the mix, there's a mix slider. Now with this mix, this determines how much of the paint is going to mix in with each other. Okay, so if I turn, let me pick a different color here so we can see it clearly. Uh, let's pick something that's absolutely different. So if I turn the mix all the way up to 100. Okay, so if we're using a different color, we come in here with green and we have the mix slider. If I change the mix slider all the way to zero, what this means is the colors will not interact with each other. That's the, the idea. But you'll notice it is still mixing slightly. And why is that? Okay, That's because we have the slider set to wet. If you don't want it to mix whatsoever, you have to take it to zero. Now, give you an example here. So if I crank up the, f let me actually pick a different brush tip too. Um, let's see here. All right, so now we're gonna have the mix turn on. And the reason why I pick a different brush, because as I said before, the tip does have a big impact on how the paint flows in and out of each other. So by using a brush that has a little bit more texture and coarseness to it, you'll see that I'm able to manipulate the paint a little bit better. If I crank up the wet slider so that the paint is really slippery, Okay, and if I turn on the mix, it allows the two colors to interact with each other. So those are the primary brush controls. Now, what happens if you want this just to become a blender? So if you want this to become a blender, go up here to the top, you'll see a little brush with an arrow on it, tap on that. What this will allow you to do is now have whatever the settings are for the brush to now be uh, allowed to just not have paint and only allow you to blend. Okay, so if we want to turn that back on, we click here and now we can release with the paint. If I turn the wetness slider back down, uh, here let me show you something else you can do. Okay, so if we come over here to this brush settings window, if you look under transfer, you'll see here we have some controls. The flow, what is that? That's essentially your opacity slider in terms, it, it determines how the paint will release off of the brush just by pin pressure. Okay, so that's one. If you go down to, and I like to have that on. If you go to wetness, this controls how the paint is going to be wet or dry. You can set that to a pin pressure. Then you can also go down to the mix slider and turn that on pin pressure, which I like to do. That way, depending on how much pin pressure you apply with your Wacom tablet will determine how it mixes. So I like to have those on. Also, I do typically will turn down my flow slider and it allows me to manipulate the paint pretty well. So let me go ahead and go through here and see if I can find a couple brushes that I have already set up for myself. So, all right, so for example, these are brushes that I made to simulate Corel, okay? So if you look on the settings on this brush, I have the wetness at one, load is 100, mix zero, and I have the flow at 100%. This is to give me an opaque brush but it slightly intermingles just the tiniest bit with the paint underneath, okay? So let's go ahead and clear this whole thing and pick something. Let's do this, okay? Now, just so you can see, if I were to pick another color, make it brighter on top of this, you can see it has that slight little interaction, and I like that because it, it doesn't feel like the brush stroke is um, isolated and, and uh, has a cold, hard edge. I like that the paint to, to have an oil fluidity to it. 
Now, let's see if we can go find another one of our brushes in here. Okay. That was the oil pastel. So this one is just a pointed round. Okay. So you can see this has just a little bit of tooth. Let's go here. I have an oil, oops, oil canvas. And this is a blender. Now, if I want this to paint, I just click on this icon. Click on the icon. And now it becomes available to apply paint. The load is at 100. The wet is at 10%. And the flow is 30%. I'm going to scroll down here one more time. Let's just see another one. So when I start getting down to the bottom here, anytime when you're in 2018, you see a brush with a teardrop on it, that's, you know that it's a, um, a mixer brush. Usually if it's mine, I like to go ahead and put a blender if I already have it set up to uh, function only as a blender. Okay, so here, if you look, this is a concept art textural mix. So here, let's go ahead and do this nice and clean. Okay, if I ch uncheck the box, it now is just a blender. And you can see just by doing this, I'm able to manipulate the color and the texture around. And so that's the core behind uh, the mixer brushes. Let's just go ahead and dive into a couple other little things you will need to know. Um, if you create a new layer, and you want to paint. I want to point this out. If I paint some color down and I want this to interact with the surface underneath, you want to make sure you click on the box sample all layers. What this will allow you to do is when you're on a particular layer, it allows the paint to interact with the layer underneath as well as the layer on top. Be aware that this can make your computer run a little slower. So keep that in mind. Also with the mixer brushes, if you make them a lot bigger, this can start to slow down sometimes. It can drag your brush a little bit. If that happens, what you can do is go to brush tip shape, go to spacing and open it up a little bit. Okay, so, but you can end up with spacing. Now here's the thing, if I do use the spacing, I usually use it with a textured brush something like this so you can't see the space if it's a circle brush i i wouldn't do that um next thing i want to point out is this okay so let's just say i'm going to make this zero for wetness so i don't have to do a mix if you come over here you'll see there's the square icon down here in the bottom you'll notice i have it set up where i'm eye dropping solid colors if you uncheck this box and you come over and eye drop, what you'll see, you can now eye drop multiple colors onto the brush. So now all I gotta do is brush down, you can see it allowed me to sample and paint with the color from multiple areas with this brush. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. I just wanna give you a heads up. I have some courses that are pre-orders that are ready for you guys. Uh, there's a composition course, there's another one on light and color, and then I have another one that's going to be coming out 
uh, in two months, actually July. And that's going to be a very deep, extensive course on digital painting. Uh, and then after that, I'm going to have my next one. It's going to be digital painting in a production uh, format. Uh, but for now, this is what I have going. I have a whole bunch of other courses I'm going to launch. Now, keep this in mind. The, the pre-orders, these launch dates, it's for everyone. But if you're going to do the mentor track, so let me explain. There's two tracks. One, you get the course. You go through it. Uh, you'll be placed in a Facebook group as well as I'll have another group set up and you'll be able to feed back with each other. I'll go through and take a look uh, once in a while to be able to see how everyone's doing. But then if you want to get the truly mentor track, that's going to be on June 4th. And that's basically where uh, you submit your work. I'm going to go walk you through this whole process. I'm going to instruct you. I'm going to guide you uh, through the whole uh, life of the course. So that's for people who really want to have someone looking over their shoulders to make sure they're learning the material and applying it correctly. Okay, and at the end of this, I'm also going to provide you guys with a certificate of completion, but that is for the mentor track. So if it's something you're interested in, please go ahead and look down low. I'm going to have a 25% code as well as the link to the site where you're going to be able to pre-order. So the pre-orders are going to go all the way up to June 4th. After that, it's going to go up to its regular price. So hopefully you'll join me and jump in on this. Uh, in the meantime, Robert Revels, Digital Painting Tips, I'm out.